At a young age, I became obsessed with video games. So obsessed that I dream of fighting Ganondorf using the Master Sword and battling the Elite Four with my Charizard to become the best. Of course, in my dreams, I would defeat the foes and get the girl. However, when I became older, I really started to think how I would act in a fantasy setting. What if I got one of my companions killed by making a poor decision on the battlefield and there was no way to bring them back to life like in Fire Emblem? Would I honestly have the courage to become an adventurer? Apparently I'm not the first one to have such thoughts of living in a video game. There are plenty of anime series out there that have a somewhat similar concept, such as Sword on a Line, Log Horizon, and A Soul World. As a gamer, I can't help but check out these kinds of shows, and so far nothing has lived up to my dreams. But that might change by the end of this review. <laughs> What's up people, welcome to Ray Reviews, where I, Raiden, rain upon video games and anime within Anaclai until the sun sets. Today I'll be taking a look at, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Oh no, is it wrong to try to pick, because that makes more sense. This anime is a 13 episode action adventure fantasy harem series. Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon is based on a light novel series of the same name by Fujino Omori. The anime production here is JC Staff, who you might know from Toradora, Azamanga Dayo, and Food Wars. At the time of this video, Sentai Filmworks owns the rights to the show in North America, and current there are no DVD or Blu-ray options to buy. But you can legally stream the series in the United States at Crunchyroll.com for free, and is also viewable on Hulu if you're a Hulu Plus member. The fantasy world of Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon is very similar to a traditional RPG video game, despite it actually doesn't take place in a VR game. The story goes, one day the god and goddesses of this world got bored in heaven and decided to join the humans. The powerful beings agreed not to use their divine power in the mortal world, but agreed to let each god and goddess have their own clan or following of humans. These clans are referred to as their familia. These immortals grant humans in their familia the power to explore the giant dungeon that rests in the middle of the city. The humans who explore and fight the monsters in the dungeon are known as adventurers. These adventurers slay the monsters inside the dungeon for the crystal shards, which they can turn in for money at their local guild. Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in the dungeons? Protagonist is Bell Cranel. Bell is a 14 year old boy who serves the goddess Hestia. In fact, he is the only member of the Hestia familia. Bell is an amateur adventurer who has little potential of becoming a hero of legend. One day, Bell is rescued in the dungeon by Eyes Wallenstein, one of the most powerful and beautiful swordswomen in the entire land. He develops a crush on her for her strength and looks, and vows to become stronger in order to stand as Wallenstein's equal. Bell confesses his interest in Wallenstein to his goddess Hestia. Who doesn't like hearing this because she has a crush on Bell herself? He, of course, is unaware of her romantic feelings towards him, despite her obvious attempts to spend some alone time with him. Anyhow, Bell continues his quest to become stronger by fighting monsters in the dungeon. Soon, Bell acquires a skill that lets him gain more experience points than the normal person, thus giving him the ability to acquire a large amount of power in a short period of time. Bell can literally see his stats increase thanks to Hestia. She, along with all the other gods, have the power to see a person's stats and skills, which they can record on paper and show to the Familia members. Hence my video game comparison. As you can imagine, Bell goes on many adventures in the dungeon and becomes stronger and stronger. On his journey, he meets countless people and cleans several attractive women, including Wallenstein, who all apparently have a crush on Bell for his kind demeanor and optimistic personality. The overall plot of this anime is fairly predictable from episode 1. I suppose it doesn't do anything terribly wrong, but it also doesn't do anything particularly good either. One of the biggest problems I had with this show was its pacing. The beginning was too slow for my taste, and the ending felt extremely rushed. Which is a shame, because I got a little bit more interested into the show towards the end. I did find the world to be interesting with all the gods and goddesses roaming around all the common folk, and the mysterious dungeon that resides in this land. At the same time though, I started to become frustrated at the poor world building used in this anime. I kept developing questions of how this fantasy world worked, and I barely got any of my questions answered. Some examples include, Okay, the gods somehow recognize each other in their human forms despite they haven't seen each other since they arrived on the mortal plane, but how? Did they look exactly the same when they were in heaven? Why are all the god and goddesses forbidden to explore the dungeon and use their divine powers when they clearly can if they want? Nobody joins Hestia's group because her story among the humans isn't popular? But why? Wait, what is her story anyway? What about the other famous gods backgrounds for that matter? Are they the same from classic mythologies? The list goes on and on. So the story isn't anything new and leaves me with too many questions. But what about the characters? Well, Bell is your average nice guy protagonist who fights for his friends. He states to be in love with Wallenstein, but doesn't try anything romantic when he finally gets some alone time with her, and he fails to realize everyone else's personal feelings for him. He is your basic harem lead male character, which you have probably seen a hundred times before. I found him to be boring, though I will admit, I did chuckle at some of his over-the-top reactions. Hestia acts childish most of the time, kind of like a younger sister who has a crush on her older brother. She honestly didn't do much as a character. Come to think about it, is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon really lacks any character development? Belle doesn't change, nor does Hestia throughout the series. The only character that shows any development is Lily Roca Ardi, a side character who is mostly not important after her story arc. To sum it up, both the story and characters here are a bit lackluster. 
The show kind of has an antagonist who appears randomly. I won't reveal the character by name or gender in case you want to be 100% spoiler free here, though it's not much of a secret. The villain plots against the show's heroes even though their motivations are unclear to say the least. They remind me of a Saturday morning cartoon villain because they can't help but give evil monologues at their ivory tower and laugh hysterically like a lunatic. I guess I'm supposed to be curious about what their actions are, but I was still too busy trying to figure out how this world works. To end on a somewhat high note, Ryu Lion was by far my favorite character of the show. Remember when I said I liked the later part of this anime? It's mostly because of her. She's a badass with a dark past. She kind of looks like a female ninja version of Link. I don't know about you, but that sounds kind of cool to me. However, she doesn't get enough screen time because the story is about Belle and not her. If they ever decide to make a spin-off of Ryu, I definitely would watch it. Here's the part of the review where I dress the ribbon-wearing elephant in the room. Obviously, this anime has a good amount of sexual fanservice being in the harem genre, and Hestia leads the charge on that front. Hestia wears a blue ribbon from bicep to bicep across her back and chest, which then lifts her chest up every time she moves her arms. Why? Cause anime, that's why! I thought the show would try to logically explain why she's wearing this uncomfortable looking ribbon on her chest, but I was wrong. Nobody in the anime even addresses her unique accessory, and don't even get me started on Wallenstein's armor. To be fair, I have seen worse when it comes to sexual fan service in anime. Let's just say I wish there was less of it in the anime industry, but we all know that won't be happening anytime soon. That aside, most of the other character designs are fine. I still have questions about the different races like the elves and dwarves and whatever the heck this guy is, but I guess it's up to my own imagination. The setting resembles more of a European architecture, which is nice to see just to get away from everyday Japan. The anime has a nice bright hue to it when they're not in the dungeon. The animation itself is solid, as you would expect from JC staff. I would even dare to say a few of the action sequences here were impressive at times, though nothing remarkable compared to a more action-oriented anime series. It's that time again where I critique voice acting in a foreign language that I really don't understand because this anime doesn't currently have an English dub. For now, let me share my thoughts about the Japanese voice actors. Overall, I didn't mind the Japanese audio, with the exception of Hestia's and Lily Roca's voice actresses. I suppose their voices matched their characters and emotional states fairly well, however, there were still times where their squeaky voices got on my nerves. I will say Yoshi Tetsugu Matsuoka gives a good performance as Bell. He comes off as a friendly idiot who is also capable of getting serious during the more intense battle scenes. The opening, ending, and is it wrong to try to pick up a girls in a dungeon were forgettable for me. The opening theme song is a light J-pop rock number that consists of little animation. Plus the opening kind of spoils some of the characters and plot elements in the series, which is always a bummer to me. I enjoyed the ending more with the chibi characters and its upbeat temple. I'm a sucker for some drums and a little bit of brass instruments. The sound to me in this series was the music composed by Kenji Inai. Many of the pieces for this anime have a more orchestral tone to them. I thought he created several great peaceful tunes during the more relaxing moments in this anime and did an amazing job at slowly increasing the tension. I really thought his music really helped establish the show's fantasy environment. If this OST was ever released on iTunes or something, I would definitely buy it. The RPG fantasy video game setting is a popular trend right now in Japan, and frankly, I'm kind of getting tired of it. Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon does a terrible job at explaining the fantasy world to its viewers. The plot is extremely predictable for fans of the genre, and its pacing is one of the worst I've seen in a while. I was somewhat disappointed about the lack of character development that goes on the show, and I found the main leads to be either boring or somewhat annoying. I'm personally not a fan of the overuse of sexual fan service used in this anime. The animation and music gave me hope for the series, but I'm afraid even the great animators and composer couldn't save this anime for me. Based on my own taste and preferences, I give Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon a 2 out of 5, and a recommendation to skip it. I do want to say a 2 out of 5 in my mind is equivalent to an okay rating, but I just didn't think the show added anything new to the genre and I thought there were other series out there that did a better job, which is why I say skip it rather than watch it. If you like RPGs and harems, then this show might be for you. If you don't like poor world building or sexual fan service, then this show might not be for you. But hey, that's just my opinion. Have you seen Is It Wrong to Try Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? What did you think about it? Please leave your comments below. I always enjoy having respectful conversations with people who have a similar or different opinion from my own. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up by clicking the like button. And if you want to keep updated with all my video reviews, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, Ray Reviews, where I plan on having many more reviews of video games and anime. If you're into social media and you want to chat or hear my thoughts about the latest geek news, you can like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and find me on Instagram. I provide links to all these social medias in the description below. I look forward to our nerdy discussions. Thanks for watching. I was Raiden, and I'll see you guys again when the sun rises out.